Welcome to Prime 9, the countdown show that covers the very best in baseball. Guaranteed to start arguments, not end. This episode features the game's top nine good luck charms. Why nine? That's baseball. Nine players, nine innings. Prime 9. So how do we define a good luck charm in baseball? Well, these are players who happen to be in the right place at the right time when good things happen. You've been a part of the World Series before? It doesn't mean their team has to win a World Series, though they might. The Fireworks have won the World Series. It could just be that extraordinary things happen to their team in the course of the season. Well hit to right field, Carter to the wall. Grand slam, Lonnie Smith. And we're talking about players who bring their charm to multiple teams throughout the course of their careers. There goes Kenny. Lofton with another steal. They say that fortune favors the bull. So let's meet the game's greatest good luck charm. Hey, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Let's go. These paragons of prosperity, starting with number nine on Prime Nine. If the goal was for your team to reach the loftiest of heights, Kenny Lofton was your man. Number one, Kenny Lofton. Kenny was a very confident player, and he had that little bit of strut about him. He loved playing in the big game. Here comes Lofton. Here comes a throw. Keith, and Cleveland has won it. Whenever he came up to bat, Something good was going to happen. Whenever he got on base, he turned a walk into a double, a single into a triple, and we knew we were going to score a run. The Yankee fans uh, want no part of Kenny Lofton. Kenny wreaked havoc on opposing teams in great part due to his speed, leading the American League in steals five straight years. From his knees, the throw not in time. When the pressure on the defense. Uh, I don't like to talk about him. He was such a good base dealer. Blazing fast. You were always behind the eight ball with him. He was always on base. He can control the game. This is an exciting player. It was like he could toy with the pitcher and change the game. You know, as an outfielder, as a d defensive player, you just like keep lofting off the bases because lofting on the bases makes every pitcher just throw meatballs to it doesn't matter who's hitting. Get out, get out, get out, get out! One of the best base stealers of his era. He hit for average. He drew walks. He was a gold glove caliber center fielder. He made the catch! Kenny Lofton! You have to be a great player in order to be considered a good luck charm. And when you go in a playoff run, especially with a young team, you want him to be a leader. Once you get a taste of playing in the playoffs and into the World Series, it's something that sets you apart from every other player. What set Kenny apart was making the playoffs with six different clubs. In fact, he enjoyed postseason play 11 times in his 17-year career. That's the kind of good luck charm you want to have in your clubhouse. Really one of the underrated players of the late 20th century. Quite a bit earlier in that century, Wally Shang was everything but a lead-footed catcher. Now, Shang was really a complete player, uh, somebody hit for average, played very good defense, and because he had speed, because he was a good hitter, his managers liked to keep him in the lineup even when he wasn't catching. This is a switch hitting catcher who had a very long career, 284 batting average, which makes him one of the highest performers among catchers who typically are valued for their defense. But Shang brought more to the table than just his myriad talents. For he also seemed to have a knack for playing on winning teams. Shang was not only a good player, he was smart enough to be lucky. So he landed on the 1913 A's when they went to a championship. He landed on the 1918 Red Sox when they went to a championship. He was with the Yankees for three straight pennant winners, and the last of these was the 1923 World Series champion, the first the Yankees ever had. And he hung on long enough to win yet another with the 1930 A's. A really good catcher, really lucky. Number seven. If Jeff Conine were to run for mayor of Miami tomorrow, there's a pretty good chance he'd win in a landslide. 
Look what I started. Fly ball to right, way back, and Conine has tied this game up in the bottom of the ninth inning. Jeff's a great player to, to have on your team. He brings an intensity level that is unmatched with any other teammate that I've had. Conine's a guy that's not afraid to get in your face. Jeff Conine was just a professional, knew how to prepare, great hand-eye coordination. Watch this pitch, see how he goes to it with his upper body? That's how you hit a pitch that's away from you. Jeff helped the Marlins win a title in 97. When they brought him back in 2003, they won still another. He hit 304 in 32 postseason games. Conine goes the opposite way and gets his third hit of the night and his 21st of this postseason. He was a tough out at the plate, and, you know, he, he was a gritty ball player in the field, too. In fact, it was his accurate arm that helped lead the 2003 Marlins to their dramatic division series clincher. This one to left field. Conine coming in. He can't get it. Here comes Snow. Here's the throw home. Here's the throw to the plate. Punch is waiting. It was such a good throw that I just waiting to uh, get this Noah hit me. And the Marlins win the division series. Anyone that has an opportunity to go into the playoff run would definitely want to pick up Jeff Conheim. Just the whole experience of postseason play. We shocked the world, South Florida. We shocked him again. To be able to climb up to the pinnacle of your sport and be able to call yourself a World Series champion, not many guys can say that. When Mike Stanton debuted in the majors in 1989, the Atlanta Braves starting rotation featured Smoltz and Glavin. But it was in the bullpen where Mike carved his own niche, just the beginning of a career laden with good fortune. The 0-2, here it is. Struck him out with a fastball. Stanton was one of the first career lefty one-out guys, lefty specialists who were signed to come in and get the other team's best left-handed batter. Back-to-back -back strikeouts here in the eighth for Stanton. He was going to face a tough lefty, and he would get that lefty out. But you could also leave him in the ball game because he could also get right-handers out. The 2-2 two -two pitch. He struck him out. He threw hard. You know, he had a good slider. And uh, he had a little bulldog in him. You know, he'd come right after you. You was going to have to beat Mike. For 11 straight years wearing four different uniforms, Stanton pitched postseason ball. Stanton will deal with the hero of game two. He struck him out. Twice he went to the World Series with Atlanta. Then in 1997, he became a Yankee at just the right time. Mike Stanton was certainly critical to the Yankee dynasty of the late 1990s. Joe Torre built his bullpen with Mariano Rivera in the ninth inning and Stanton and Jeff Nelson pitching the seventh and the eighth. And when a manager of that ilk makes you that important to such a good team, you clearly have a lot of value out of the bullpen. Stanton won three rings with the Yankees and his postseason stats are impeccable. He did indeed live a charmed life in the October spotlight. Two perfect innings worked by Stanton. Anytime you look at certain players and you find out every year they're going to a playoff or a World Series, they have to have something to offer, and Mike Stanton did. Number five. Look at the camera. The camera's right there. No question, Reggie Sanders was a prime time player. Sanders, there it goes! Woo! He killed it! He could hit, hit for power, he could run, he could throw, play great defense. He did it all. Sanders makes a grab as he hits a turn. As a player, you always have that kind of swagger about you. You always have that edge as if, you know, you, you're able to help a ball club. And that's, you know, what we play for, our competitiveness. Reggie hit 20 or more home runs for six different teams. His combination of power and speed made him a solid player. But he was also a rather unique individual. So how was he as a teammate? He was a real good teammate, but he was a neat freak. You know, he was one of those kind of guys that liked to smell good before the game. And I was like, Reggie, this is baseball. You're supposed to be funky or something, you know. I'm sorry. Uh, get him out of here. In order to have success as a team, you have to have guys that are characters in the clubhouse that uh, kind of keep things loose. And there's no question that Reggie was one of those guys. They're my boys. Those are my boys. They take care of me. Got a good feeling today. You've been a part of the World Series before? 
Sanders bat and charm took him to 14 postseason series with five different teams. He played in the World Series for three different teams in four years, winning it all with Arizona in 2001. You can forget about this one. Guys like that, wherever they go, seem to rub off on other guys on the ball club and they end up winning games. And that, of course, begs the question. Was Reggie a good luck charm or just good? Forget about it. That is gone. Reggie Sanders. I don't know if it's a good luck charm, but it's something in the air or the water or something, you know. Reggie would move around and stuff, but he always had that knack for finding the right team at the right time. Oh, yeah, baby. That one doesn't have to get up. It is long gone. Lonnie Smith did everything fast. He even brought good luck to the first team he played for. Smith's going to keep on going. He was a rookie for the Phillies in 1980 when they won their first World Series title in franchise history. The Philadelphia Phillies are the champions of the world. He had all the right tools to excel offensively on the fast carpets of his era. Lonnie Smith was an incredibly fast line drive hitter in an era that really rewarded players who could hit the ball to the outfield and run with all these turf parks in the 1980s. But Lonnie did more than just run. He also won, earning his second ring with the 82 Cardinals and his third with the 85 Kansas City Royals. The celebration begins. Smith became the only player in history to reach the World Series with four different teams when he got there again in 91 with the Braves. He played in five league championship series and won every one. First and foremost, he was a great teammate, just a great guy, a great guy to be around, great attitude. The second thing is he could just flat out hit. Grand slam, Lonnie Smith. But never had he hit one in the World Series until now. One of the most hard-nosed ball players I think I've ever seen. Didn't care who got the credit, and I think that's the way you go about winning a championship. I would like to see you go up to the notoriously grouchy Paul O'Neill and say, Paul, how does it feel to be a good luck charm? Charm was not part of Paul's on the field demeanor, but his teammates still loved him. How can you not love Paul O'Neill? You know, if you want one player that's a fiery type of a player that's going to give you everything that he has on a field, whether you're winning 10 0 or losing 10 0, it's Paul O'Neill. There's the catch, and the runner moves on to third base, and he's Paul played for his home state Cincinnati Reds his first eight years in the majors and helped bring the Queen City a title in 1990. Cincinnati, the champions of baseball. He was a good player when he was a part of our championship team in Cincinnati, but when he got to New York, he was a tremendous player and he competed harder than anybody I've ever seen. There is no greater gamer than Paul O'Neill has been over the years. He was a guy that really loved to win, hated to lose, hated to fail. A lot of times he wore his emotions on his shoulder. O'Neill obviously is not happy, and that's not unusual for Paul. Paul thought he should have been five for five every single night. He was a tremendous hitter. He was a tremendous batter. A little stare-down session with the bat convinced his bat had better start working. A guy that Joe Torre calls the heart of the Yankees, Paul O'Neill. Paul went to the postseason with New York every year between 1995 and 2001, winning four World Series along the way. The Yankees have done it again. The New York Yankees, world champions, team of the decade. But Paul's good fortune wasn't only evident in October. He also played on the winning side in five no-hitters, three of them perfect games. Tom Browning has pitched a perfect game. Just a handful of perfect games in baseball history. Throwing one takes a lot of luck. Being on the field for three of them is just good fortune. Paul was blessed with the luck of the Irish and the respect of the baseball world. He loved playing the game, and uh, I would take him on my team anytime. Or no. We now return to Prime Nine, where in this episode we're featuring the game's most obvious good luck charms. These are men who somehow happened to bring positive vibrations to whatever team they were playing for at the time. So let's meet our top two.
two men who seemingly possess an extraordinary gift for being in the right place at the right time. We begin with number two. If your favorite team plays in the AL East, you know all about Eric Hensky. Hensky? The Henskinator? Hensky on the move. It's bending away as he dives and makes the catch in right. Here's Eric Hensky. See you later. That's why they got him. Definitely is a good luck charm. I mean, my God, we were happy to get him. But the thing about Eric that really surprised me is he's just such a good baseball player. Hensky going back, makes a catch. Hensky to the max. After winning Rookie of the Year honors with Toronto in 2002, Eric went to fall classics with the Red Sox, Rays, and Yankees. For Hensky to pop up on three teams in a row in the World Series is a pretty amazing thing. It all began in Boston during the Red Sox 2007 title run. I know when we had him, we loved him. Hensky in! Red Sox win! You know, he was going from at a time where he was passing that torch from being an everyday player to a bench player, and it's really hard to do. But the way he handled it was so professional, and I'm sure that's part of the reason that good teams want him. Eric Hensky has done it all tonight. Eric went south in 2008 and took his versatility and good luck charm right along with him. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Hensky is unbelievable. I mean, he's one of the best teammates. He creates good chemistry with the team, so I, I completely understand why, you know, all the teams that he's on win games. Hensky makes the grab. We wanted him just for his good luck. It's a home run for Hensky. After winning his second ring with the Yankees in 2009, Eric moved to the NL East and the Braves, who promptly reached the playoffs for the first time in five years. Swing a long drive, deep to right, curling toward the foul pole, gone! And that's his fourth pinch hit home run. He's more than a good luck charm. You know, it's not coincidence that every team he's on has success. What he brings to the field every day is his passion to win. So how does Eric feel about reaching the postseason with four different teams over four straight years? Does he think he was lucky? Yeah, I guess I would consider myself a lucky person. I'd rather be lucky than good any day. <laughs> so what does that make Don Baylor, who played on three straight pennant winners with the 86 Red Sox, 87 Twins, and 88 A's? You see, none of those teams reached the playoffs the year before Don put on their uniform. And Baylor delivers yet again. When Don signed with the Angels for the 77 season, he assumed a special role on the team. Well, Donnie was considered the enforcer on our club. When you have a group of guys that are good at what they do and you can push each other to accomplish certain things. California Angels RBI man Don Baylor makes his first all-star appearance. We call him Groove. When he got into his grooves, just bullets he would hit. We couldn't get him up. It's gone! In 1979, he helped lead California to its first postseason appearance in team history and was named the league MVP. If there's anyone in the league that was going to win it that year, it had to be Donnie. On every occasion when we needed a big hit or someone to hit the ball out of the ballpark, you know, Baylor was there. When he landed in Boston in 86, Don brought the same karma to a team that hadn't played postseason ball in more than a decade. And that changed our whole ball club around right there, adding Don Baylor, who was a, a leader. I remember having uh, the organized kangaroo corps to kind of lighten everybody up. It made everyone think, too, that, you know, you miss a cutoff, man, or you make a mental error, it's going to cost you. It cost his former Angels team big time when he helped fuel a ferocious ninth-inning comeback in Game 5 at the LCS with a two-run blast. Don Baylor hits one out! He was back in the World Series the following year, where his penchant for prosperity saw the Minnesota Twins capture their first-ever World Series title. Pinch hit, game winning hit, and I remember Guy Eddie says, okay, now I understand why we have you over here. And I think it took a lot of pressure off a lot of the, the young twins. One year later, he was in Oakland, where the A's went from a 500 team the year prior to a pennant winner. It is gone. Tom Baylor watches his first 1988 home run. It was 
a good personal friend of mine still today. Uh, nothing but respect for him, and I appreciate having the opportunity to play with a guy like Don Bailey. And the Oakland A's have won the American League pennant. He knew the game. He had a good personality. He was somebody you'd say he's going to be a manager someday. And that's what he became taking his good fortune to Colorado, where he was named Manager of the Year after leading the Rockies to the playoffs in just their third year of existence. At the time, the fastest any expansion team had ever reached postseason play. Don believes, and rightly so, that it starts from the top. Don Baylor's just an excellent influence on these guys. Wherever he goes in the game, whatever he does, Don Baylor just seems to make teams better. I was blessed, just put it that way. It was uh, just a, a great opportunity for me to be a part of those teams. A current player who just missed making this show is infielder Orlando Cabrera. Consider that in July of 2004, he was traded by the Expos to Boston. Red Sox promptly won their first World Series in 86 years. He went to the Angels in 2005 and help them beat the Yankees in the ALDS. Anaheim traded into the White Sox for the 2008 season, and that year Chicago beat the Twins in a one-game playoff to reach the playoffs. Then, in 2009, Cabrera ended up on the Twins, and they also won a one-game playoff to reach the postseason. He joined the Reds in 2010, and they got to the playoffs for the first time in 15 years. Home run, Orlando Cabrera! Orlando Cabrera has lived a charmed life indeed. That's our Prime Nine. What's yours?